Welcome to Massive Passive Cash Flow, the podcast that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Here's your host, Gary Wilson. Hello, and welcome to the Massive Passive Cash Flow podcast. This is Gary Wilson, your host. Welcome back, everyone. Good to see you and hear from you. Uh, we got a great guest today, Dave Schmidt from the great state of Delaware. You know, they have, they have lots of claims to fame there for a small state. Big stuff comes out of there. So we'll get to the day in just a second. But uh, if you could, if you haven't yet done so, please subscribe to the podcast. Of course, it's on Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, probably 30 different channels. And also, if you have not, uh, go to the website, realestatewithgarywilson.com. Click on the members area right up top. Click on that. In the next page, you'll see at the left. If you're a member, you go to the left. If you're not a member, you go to the right. And get yourself some some goodies for the next 30 days for free. They literally let you in, um, you know, and free access, lock, stock, and barrel the books, all the recordings, the, the the websites we use in our research, the the tools we use for calculations. You can grab it all for free. So I recommend you you do that. And by the way, when you're there, click on a community site and connect with one of our investor agents. These are agents we trained all over the U.S. and Canada to work with us investors. They're certified. That's the only place they can get it. And they know how to identify, right, analyze, and negotiate deals for you, whether it's offline or offline. It doesn't matter. They, 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 got them. They, they literally have access, guys, to every single parcel in the country at their fingertips. Mm-hmm. Debt information, length of ownership, everything. It's crazy. So, so go ahead and do that. In the meantime, let's get back to Dave. So, Dave, first off, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking your, your precious time to do this, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. Well, I, I let them know, obviously, you're, you're from Delaware, but if you would mind, just paint a little bit of a bigger picture for us on you know, really who you are. I mean, you know, if you want to color it a little bit with, some, uh, with, a, with a good, juicy story, you know, we won't tell. So. <laughs> sure. So I'm 25 years old. I'm from Delaware. I've lived here most of my life. Um, I started off in the maritime industry. I went to maritime college in New York. I worked on tugboats. I sailed up and down the, the coast. And, um, while doing that, I, you know, wanted to research how I could make some more extra money per se. And I, you know, real estate, uh, was one of the first things that popped up. I just knew people around that had made money in real estate. So, um, I ended up starting to read podcasts, uh, YouTube videos, all that for, you know, probably a year before I did anything. Um, I found a mentor. He was willing to teach me a lot of things, which I would recommend everybody get some type of mentor. Uh, You know, an older person that's getting out that wants to kind of pass the ropes along per se. So I found somebody like that and they were able to teach me everything that they had used to become very, very successful. Um, And eventually within a short period of time, I was able to quit my job uh, working on boats, you know, going away for two or three weeks on, two or three weeks off. And I, I was able to get into real estate. At that same time, my dad had really started to take uh, retirement more seriously. He was a doctor. He's had multiple surgeries on his back. Uh, so have I I've had back surgery as well. So he was getting more limited in, his, in his, uh, his physical abilities as a surgeon. And he wanted to make some money. So with what I had learned and some of his retirement savings, you know, he had started investing in my company and my deals. Um, that was when I was 22, it was in a, you know, about three or four years ago. And mm-hmm. now um, we've kind of transitioned to uh, a larger house buying company. Uh, he's now my business partner. And then a private lending company that services, you know, all of Delaware, Maryland, parts of Philadelphia and South Jersey. Um, and now we're, you know, putting a lot of money on the street versus what we were doing a couple of years ago. So we've really grown and just kind of immersed ourselves in this. Um, and now we're, Going for that big passive, uh, you know, it's not to be too cliche, but going after that passive lifestyle yep. of not having to go to work every day, um, you know, making money, you know, putting our money to work. We had, we just talked on the on the phone this morning. We're we're trying to take money from here and put it into this deal and that deal, and you know, mm-hmm. keep it on the street as as much as we can with the best deals. So uh, yeah, that's how I got here. Awesome. It yeah, definitely are, if would. When you learn how to, to, to make money and accumulate it, you, you're also going to learn how to keep it deployed, <laughs> you know, and be, be right. strategic. You know, markets change. And it, it doesn't mean, it, people, it's funny because um, a lot of novices will say, well, I'm, I'm going to wait till the market, you know, slows down or whatever. I'm like, well, 
you know, there, there are multiple strategies. Some work great right in an up market, some work great right in a down market. You just have to know the strategies and apply them, you know, be strategic about your deployment of your funds, but you, you should always be in the game swinging the bat, you know? That's right. If there were, if there were only deals in a down market, then there wouldn't be wealthy people because, you know, the markets aren't always down and you have to figure out a way to adapt and evolve and to be able to make money in any market cycle. Um, and that, that's just, that's just how business is real estate and business in general. It's just either, you know, the strong survive and the weak don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, if you wouldn't mind, um, by the way, I appreciate you giving us some background. I, I didn't realize you're, you know, you're, you're part of the maritime industry for a bit. And I've always been fascinated by, I used to, I lived on a boat for a while when I was in college. You can imagine yeah. that. It didn't last that long. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I've, I've lived on them for a while. They, 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 it gets old quick. Oh yeah. Yep. So, uh, but in any case, if you wouldn't mind, We've, we've already kind of jumped into the meat and potatoes, but um, fill us in a little bit about what it is you're doing. I mean, you, you gave us a great little snapshot there, um, but go, go dig into, you know, you know, what it is you're doing. And maybe even if we have a case study or something that are really, uh, and everybody listening, make sure you're taking notes here. And this is so important. You know, the, why this is so fitting and the timeliness is so important is, you know, Dave and I were talking before this and I'm, I was in banking for 18 years. And I learned to notice, I learned to determine when the consumer banks are starting to pull back. They'll say certain things, they'll ask certain questions they don't normally ask, and they're starting to do that now. And then we, we also talked about the bigger capital markets for big projects, things like that. They've already started pulling back. So you really got to understand as part of your business model, whether you're owning a business, your own real estate, or both, um, this is really, this is an, a critically important subject. So please take notes. If you're driving, pull over. <laughs> so, uh, so Dave, sorry about that. I just wanted to preface everybody. It's, uh, I'm not trying to scare people. We've I've been through five recessions and I know this is, you never know when the lights are going to go out. So the key is to prepare, right? right. So that's what this that's is. Right. About. Yeah. So go, go ahead so, and take it away, Dave, if you don't mind, you know. Yeah. So my company is it's called Real Alternative Capital and we're basically, um, we're a private lending company, a, you know, a very small private lending company. Um, and our goal is to uh, put our money and investor money on the street. Uh, when I say on the street and in, invest it into great real estate deals. Um, and we have another company that, that we buy houses in and, and we obviously use some capital in, in that company. But like you said, it's hard to have great deals all the time. So that's why we have the private lending company to um, create that passive income while you're working on a big deal and you don't have any cash flow, it's nice to have loans bringing in money, you know, to pay those monthly bills because, uh, you know, anybody that's in real estate knows sometimes you go a long time without a paycheck if you have a big project. Now, it might be a really big paycheck you're waiting on, but uh, so, so that's why we started the private lending company. We can keep our money out to work all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the other reason that we started the company is my dad's retirement was in Wall Street. And this was, like I said, starting a couple of years ago, um, I was looking at the returns he was making in, in you know, these mutual funds. And he was obviously close to retirement and they were, they were horrible. I mean, they, you know, they were less, they were sub 5% easily, uh, sometimes closer to 3% after taxes, uh, fees, um, inflation, all that kind of stuff, just ridiculous amount of fees uh, in particular. And so, so we kind of, segued over to private lending where we can hedge our risk. Um, you know, we're in control of the deal. Uh, we, we make sure the deals are really great because we already understand what great deals look like because that's what we do. Um, so that, that was something that we liked was that continued control. And we're able to charge, uh, you know, what I consider fair to the borrower, but a great interest rate that, you know, most of our capital investors make nine to 10% um, per, per year, which to us is, we think is pretty strong. And, and I don't really know of any other uh, bond like asset class that can, you know, create that type of return. Uh, right now, we're even more adamant about this asset class. I mean, we've, we've talked about getting into real estate syndication, multifamily. Um, but, but since COVID, we really uh, kind of pulled away from that because of all the issues with tenants not paying their rent and other issues like that. We, we really came came to the conclusion that we want to be the bank. And um, I'm not here to, to, to pitch anybody. I'm just telling you that my personal opinion is the best position in any real estate deal, big ones, small ones, is to be the bank. Uh, I think it has the most upside and the most uh, you know, downside protection. 
so that's that's why we have decided to get into private lending, and we're trying to educate other people about private lending and um, you know how I don't want to say safe because that's not a good word to use when you're when you're talking about investments, but th- like we talked about before, there's a reason that banks are at the top of the food chain, okay, in the, in the whole country and in the world because they have this stuff figured out. So we're trying to replicate that and do the deals that the banks won't touch um, that we understand. Yeah. Well, I love it. You're right. There's a, a, a bigger banks, which is the part of the business I was in. I was in mergers and acquisitions, and they had certain uh, pro formas they followed for different different classes of loans. They had silos. Like one silo was for, you know, consumer owner occupant properties, you know, less than five hundred thousand. Another silo was five hundred to, you know, two million, something like that. And then on the on the non residential side or non owner occupant side. You had your four units and below. Then you had five to 19 units. Then you had the bigger properties, you know, 20 to 49. Then you had retail and, and uh, you know, um, office space and stores. So but what, hap- what happens is they'll take a consumer loan request and run it across and see which silo it fits in. And if it doesn't fit neatly in a silo, they just kick it out. They don't even, sometimes the lender you're talking to doesn't even know why. Oh, we just didn't accept the loan up. And yep, another thing is, is though that particular silo may be full. It might be too overly weighted in that one silo. And that's another reason why big banks stop, you know, don't, don't lend you. You could be a great credit risk, but there are too much risk for them in that silo. It's all about risk for the, for the lending. So what I like about like local community banks and private lenders is they actually look at the project. They look at you and the project and they make a decision based on its own merit, not whether you fit up a, a, into a silo or not, you know? Uh, that's that's huge. That's what that's like basically. Um, and and I ran into this problem when I first started. Obviously, I, I would max out somebody like my dad's capital, and then you go looking for other lenders. And there's not a lot of people that understand the what you're talking about, the asset based lending, um, in its truest form. Even local banks, I feel like they're getting farther and farther away from it. Um, so we're that's that's gold to us is the deal. What's the deal like? I mean, we obviously look at borrowers, any good private lender is going to make sure the borrower is legitimate. Um, but we're going to look at things like their income. And we're going to understand that if they're a small business owner, they're, they don't want to show a lot of income. You know, they, they don't want, they don't want to show that at the end of the year, a bank doesn't like that. But as long as they can pay our loan and, um, and they're what we constitute a strong borrower, then we're going to do the deal. And, we see a lot of opportunity. Now you asked for an example deal. This is a really, you know, basic numbers. Um, but basically we lend up to 65% of the after repair value. So let's just assume that, you know, the borrower is buying a house. It's worth a hundred thousand dollars right now. It's, it's in great condition. They just need to buy it from a distressed seller. Uh, our max loan amount is $65,000. Okay. And so we have, a huge amount of upside um, and, and that, that's a ton of equity for, for us, 35%. Uh, that's what we really like about the deal. And, and the crazy part is to your listeners out there, they may think there's no deals like this. There are deals like this in every community, every town in America. I know because I do them in a very small town and many other small towns, there are deals like this in your own backyard. And there are, there are, not just lenders, but there's, you know, house flippers that, that your listeners could, you know, partner with and fund their deals. Th- they, these are available where you can, you know, give somebody $50,000 for yeah. a project, be in the first lien position, and it's worth $300,000 when it's done. I mean, uh, people in the flipping business and the, in the new construction business, you know, spec homes, that, that kind of thing, they're used to banks telling them no. And they're almost not used to using other people's money. A lot of, a lot of people I deal with have never used a lender. Uh, they're, they're just basically only using their own cash. Uh, I had a gentleman yesterday, another example. He has a project. Uh, it's about a $200,000 project altogether, purchase price and renovation. He wants a loan for $50,000 where we're in the first position. So essentially, I'm giving him $50,000 he's letting me take a first position. If he defaults, I have the property. Uh, that's, you know, essentially 25% loan to value. That's a crazy deal. You wouldn't see a deal like that uh, on the mainstream. So I just want to educate people about this because 
there's investors, retail investors, capital investors, whatever you want to call them, you know, the professionals listen to this that want to make a return on the money. And then there's also borrowers out there that need the capital and the big banks and institutions aren't going to service it. So, you know, there are deals to be done and money to be made for both parties. It's really a win-win in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, let's go. I want to um, uh, go a little deeper because I, I know people listening are uh, often they're, they're on their lunch break. They're, you know, they, they got a dental practice. They get just a few minutes to, you know, you know, half hour to eat a sandwich and get a cup of coffee, that kind of thing. Um, and a lot of them have, they, they don't realize they actually may have some, something to offer themselves. So what, so for somebody who's investing in real estate, you know, how can those investors gain a com- competitive edge by providing value to their prospective clients? You know, the, the way that the way the market is these days, you've, you've got to lead with, you got to serve first, you know, lots of, lots of things about service, but you, you know, you've got to serve first for profit, but how can they, what can you do to get a competitive edge? So in the, in more in the, the way of like an agent, you mean? Well, the, the investors themselves, I mean, maybe, you know, like an investor, can they, is there a way for them to, um, let's say they've got funds to lend, uh, you know, maybe they've got like a, a, you know, a life insurance policy with a big cash value sure. and, or, and where they have a big term policy um, and a lot of value, a lot of equity in their properties. Can they use that um, to partner with you and lend out? Or is there any, any, do you ever do things like, like a partner with partner with people? Uh, yeah, well, so much. yeah, that's a great question. So we do a number of things. Um, they could obviously invest with a company like ours. Um, there's a lot of options. Um, we we operate on what's called a co lending model, um, mm-hmm. and some uh, some house flippers do as well, where they basically are partnering with us on a deal. So we may bring fifty, they may bring a hundred. That hundred, I've seen it come from life insurance policies with a large cash value. That's a that's a great way to make money, um, especially if you're older and the policy might actually pay for itself. Um, you know, that could be really good. Um, term policies. I haven't seen a lot of that. I'm not super familiar. I'm more familiar with the infinite banking concept, you know, with yep. the, with a life insurance policy, whole life. Um, self-directed IRAs. This was something that I thought a lot of people knew about. I don't know if you talk about it a lot on the show, but mm-hmm. this is huge, um, especially when it's self-directed because it's tax-free. So you can, you know, partner with somebody like us, uh, co-lend, get a 10% return, uh, own part of a note. That's essentially what it is. You're owning part of a private note and you can make those returns tax-free in your self-directed retirement account. Now, if you don't want to invest with somebody like me, maybe you want to work directly with the house flipper. That's okay too. And you just expose yourself to a little bit more risk because now you don't have somebody originating the loan. You don't have somebody servicing the loan. In the case of you know default on your borrower, uh, you as the individual, the dentist, the doctor, the lawyer, you're going to have to uh, take that person and, and file for foreclosure and, and go through that process. So so um, that's something to expect if you're going to go direct to borrower. If you're going to work with a borrower directly um, and you're listening to this show, I would highly recommend you talk to an attorney and I would recommend that whoever you're giving the money to, you really trust. Yeah. Um, because I've seen a lot of, um, and I don't mean to say this to scare people. It's just I've seen a lot of deals. There's a lot of backdoor dealing going on in private lending, um, which is okay, but it can expose some people to a lot of risk. You know, second positions, people lending in the second position to give somebody maybe rehab funds. That's a very risky loan. Um, and if you don't understand it, don't don't lend them. You know, don't do the deal. Um, so if they have a lot of money, you know, they could find a private lender in their local market like me that would take their money and, uh, you know, put it to work, service the loans, originate. And that's the first option. And obviously I'm biased. I think that's the best option. But the second option is they can go to real estate meetings. If they understand the deals, they can go to, uh, you know, a real estate investor club meeting. And if you go there and you say, hey, I have hundreds of thousands of dollars to deploy, there will be a line of people waiting to talk to you. So that's one way you can do it. Um, you can, you know, if, if you're active and you under, uh, you know, other real estate agents, you can spread the word that way. Say, hey, I'm looking to put my money out in some deals with some reliable flippers. Um, those are the two best ways right now that I'm aware of for uh, people looking to put their money to work to, to get it out on the street, as we call it. Yeah. 
Well, there's one one thing I want to touch on here. I, I, I think you call it the the, th- the three T's. How to trade in the three T's of active <clears throat> real estate investing? T's being tenant, toilets, and trash to gain the three the three P's: passive investing in real estate through private lending, which is passive, predictable, and gives you some preservation. And you kind of just touched on it there, but uh, you know what kind of things you've if you've seen along those lines, maybe through an investor meeting or even just your own one-on-one dealings, you know, for people to be able to do that. So I think it's, it's been really powerful for some people because they had large rental portfolios or they may have been actively flipping houses or even agents for that matter. And um, it's nice. They, they're um, when you buy, when you go on bigger pockets or any of these websites or you listen to podcasts, a lot of people tend to make uh, rental real estate investing seem like it's passive. In my opinion, it couldn't be farther from passive because you you always have problems. Um, you know, we own some rental property ourselves, and there's never a month where there's not a problem, something breaking or something needed to be repaired or an issue with a tenant, something of that along those lines. And and that's a short term rental for that matter, not even a long term. It's occupied all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of uh, tired landlords that I've talked to. They, they realize after they've done it for a long time that they don't make as much money as they really think they do um, after they pay all the bills. And I try to tell people that a lot when they're looking into buying rental properties. I don't like to discourage anybody from buying real estate, but I just like to see people make good returns. Uh, yeah. Everybody has a different opinion on what good is, but um, there's, there's not anything in my opinion that's more passive than being a bank. Uh, I just don't think yeah. there's any other option in real estate, maybe real estate syndication, you know, when you're buying into multifamily properties, things like that. Uh, that's a pretty passive role as a, you know, a passive investor. Uh, but like I said, I, I haven't met many people that, uh, especially after COVID are excited about rental real estate. So this is a great option that the passive predictable capital preservation, and then to tie that into the stock market a little bit, like we talked about before, some, some really excellent year-to-date earnings for people. They have, um, they're making all kinds of money making because um, they haven't sold yet and realized that game, but they don't have the capital preservation. Like we said, when, when the plug gets pulled, when the carpet gets pulled from underneath you, um, you, can lose, you, you can lose that entire 40%. So what yep. good is that? And that's, that's just our opinion. Uh, we saw that with my father in 2007 took a huge loss, you know, you had a huge gain, but when you take an even bigger loss, uh, it doesn't matter. So we're all about capital preservation. And I think that's the other thing that I'm seeing with some tired, not just tired landlords, because um, unfortunately this idea that your property appreciates on its own isn't necessarily the case, especially if a tenant's in there living poorly and not taking care of the property, you you know, and, and you're not you maybe you're paying down the mortgage and, and you have uh, you have some equity in that sense, but there were a lot of people that were caught with their pants down in 2008 in real estate, and I think that may be coming again. So the capital preservation thing is huge for us, and I think that's something that's overlooked by a lot of um, investors. They see the bubble uh, bubble economy where everything grows really fast, and they want to get in on the on the bandwagon, and I think that's just kind of a dangerous thing that in the next couple of years, we're going to see some people get caught with their pants down. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, you know, it's it, every business cycle goes up and every business cycle goes down. I've, I've never seen a up market go up forever. Eventually it's going to correct. But on the bright side, I've never seen a down market never come back up again. So it's just a natural part of the free, free market economy. The, the thing to do is instead of worrying or trying to guess is just prepare. Be, be educated to learn, get, you know, educate yourself, gather information, you know, make wise, informed decisions and be strategic. You know, like we mentioned right at the beginning of this podcast, you know, there's strategies for every type of economy. So that's why you need to learn, learn what their strategies are. And I know, they, you know we talked about the, the bankers being the top of the food chain. They absolutely are in terms of business. You know, I mean, the U, U.S. dollar is the world's reserve and people don't realize the, the Federal Reserve Bank is is privately held. It's not. The U.S. government, the U.S. people, its citizens do not own the Federal Reserve. <laughs> you it's, know? Controlled by, it's controlled by the bankers in our country. Exactly. Yep. So there's, uh, you know, they're, they're there 
you know, the reason I like, one of the reasons I like real estate is um, it's a secured loan secured by the real estate. Real estate never goes to zero. Now, we should, probably should never say never, but but the reality is, is if, even if you burn the house down, you still got the land. The land has value. Chances are the house isn't going to burn down, statistically. It, in a recession, people have to, you have to keep in mind, the houses don't burn down. They don't get torn down. They don't go away. The houses just simply change ownership. The wealth is changing hands. It's a massive transfer of wealth. You know, yep. some, somebody's going to unfortunately, you know, have to let a property go, but somebody else is going to pick up a property. Um, so how can you participate in that? that that's, that's the question. And I know one, one of the things, um, you know, that we mentioned before, I want to touch upon this a little bit is the short term debt. Um, you know, what, so if you could explain why, you know, during times like this, short term debt allows for predictable guaranteed returns and it's, it's more liquid. You know, it's not like you got something tighter for 30 years. Um, but if you could touch on that a little bit, uh, that's a little bit of strategy people can think of right now, you know? Sure. So uh, I get this question all the time and it's, uh, I get questions from people that probably don't understand real estate as much as me. And I, I really enjoy educating them about um, real estate. I get the question all the time. What are you going to do um, when the real estate market crashes? And I don't say this arrogantly, but I say I'm going to make more money. And people can't understand why. And, and I tell them there's going to be more opportunity. There's going to be more opportunity for me to buy houses. And I'm already starting to see it right now um, on the tail end of COVID. And uh, forbearances are starting to uh, end. And, and right now we're getting a lot of calls from people that haven't paid their mortgages in 12 to 18 months. Like you said, those houses aren't just going to sit there. Somebody's going to buy that house. Yep. Somebody's going to buy that house. They're going to buy it at a discount. They're going to fix it up. And in many markets, most markets in, in America, we're still underbuilt by millions of homes. And there's still going to be people buying their first home or their second home. Uh, we don't operate in you know mansions or McMansions. Not many lenders or flippers do. Um, there's always going to be that demand for somebody's first house because we're always we're always having children. We're always getting married. We're always graduating college. We're always, you know, time isn't stopping. And I think a lot of people forget about that. Uh, during the last recession, there were a lot of people that made a lot of money buying uh, more specifically short sales from banks and then turn around and selling them right back to retail, you know, consumers who were looking for a house to live in. Uh, people didn't stop buying houses to live in during the last recession. And they certainly won't in the next one. Uh, in the last one, there were plenty of vacant houses around. That's not a trend anymore. Now there are no houses uh, yeah. sitting around vacant. So that's something I think a lot of people need to remember when they're thinking about the next, next recession. There's going to be companies that are going to suffer on the uh, stock market. I think inflation is going to hurt a lot of companies' earnings. We haven't seen it yet, but I think in the next couple of quarters, you're going to see that maybe on the stock exchange. But as Average Americans get killed by inflation and you know COVID regulations, things like that. There's going to be a, a horde of opportunities all over America for anybody with capital uh, to to either invest in the deals themselves, lend the money, or you know co-invest with a, a private lender like myself. And that's where I think you need to be prepared, and you need to have your self-directed IRA ready, or cash liquid, or you talk about consumer lending tightening up, maybe refinance out your house. If you have a lot of equity, you plan on staying there, you want some tax-free money to put out on the street, maybe you know take some money out tax-free through a cash-out refinance while the rates are still low yep. and before before they tighten. Um, so I, my, my approach and my, my, um, to this, to this uh, kind of uncertain time yep. with the short-term debt is, is you can get in, you can get out, and then you can move on to the next project. And that, that really, um, that really kind of eliminates a lot of risk. Whereas if you're in one project, let's just say an apartment building for five years, mm -hmm. there's a lot of theoreticals there. In this case, if we're buying a house for 50, putting 50 into it, selling it for 200, we know what, what we have. It's a short-term deal. We know there's buyers in the market. Get in, get out, move on to the next deal. That's how we see the most, uh, we, that's, that's what we see the safest, bet in the in the uncertain economy. 
Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And, and I, know, I know we're probably getting close on hammer, but I do have, if you don't mind, one or two more questions. And Sure. Um, so one of them is, so, you know, to, like I, my background, I started investing in January 1986, right when I started my first job, literally the same, you know, the, the, within the same month. So I've always been around it and, uh, and I've always enjoyed it and appreciate it and had a lot of headaches, a lot of gray hair, you know. But so the question is, is do you believe everybody – should be investing in real estate, and, and if so, why? You know, whether and so, you know, some people maybe it should be passive because they're like a, your dad is a doctor, you know, and other yep. people maybe you're a teacher. They got more time on their hands in the summers and stuff. But if you could touch on that a little bit, I just want everybody to realize yeah, this. There's always a way to participate, you know. That's right, and and there's there's so you can if somebody's listening to this and they have not a lot of money, um, uh, but they they have the time. And the energy and the drive, they can they can work with somebody and help them find deals, or they can maybe become an agent and work with somebody like yourself. If they have a surplus of money but they don't have any time, they can work directly with um, maybe a, a contractor and try to flip properties themselves. That still takes a little bit of time. They can work with private lenders like us and co-invest to put their money to work. We're just we're uh, very bullish about it because. Like you said, they're they're not making any more dirt, and we just understand the wealth transfer that we think is going to happen. Um, it's already been happening, but it's going to continue to happen. And uh, we look at the underbuilt economy, like I mentioned before, in the way of housing. I mean, especially in in rural communities, uh, there's a lot of people on here probably listening that don't live in a big city. Mm-hmm. I got news for you: there's better deals in my opinion, in rural communities uh, than, than the big cities. Uh, and you'd be surprised. You just need to look around. But the reason we're so bullish is because um, the stock market changes in an instant. Yeah. Bitcoin changes. We've seen a change fifteen, twenty thousand $20,000 in one day. Mm-hmm. That's never happened with a house unless you know we talk about it burning down or yeah. some act of God. That's never happened to any house that I've owned in one day not in one month, not in one year, um, just out of the blue. So that's something that is really powerful. And you don't, you don't really have that type of capital preservation in many other investments. And I think uh, for the last 20 or 30 years, these investments haven't been mainstream to, to, to working professionals. Uh, that's why I think we've seen the syndication boom for multifamily investment and things like that. Uh, I think it's just something that if you were invested in it during the last recession, uh, you would have made way more money than if you were in the stock market during the last recession. Uh, it was so much more predictable. You yep. would have had, you know, you would have had your consistent returns throughout. You would have been making money. There would have been continued opportunity where a major majority of people, unfortunately, working professionals that were still working hard, putting their money away, doing everything society said but it just didn't work for them. And, and I guess we're trying to get a lot of those people out of that situation because when you're a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, I don't think you should have to work for 40 or 50 years. That's, you know, yeah. that, and, and go to work every day, nine to five. I, I couldn't do it. Uh, you know, I work for my house and I have a great life and I have a lot of time freedom. And I think that working professionals should have that available to them too. So I think having maybe not be like us uh, where we are a hundred percent all in on real estate and my family and private lending, maybe not be as, as crazy about it as us, but have something in your portfolio um, that's related to real estate or private lending. Uh, I, I just think it's something that's going to be good to have during the next recession, the next downturn. Yeah. It's, it's sort of a, if you think about it historically, when people are all running from wall street, they're running to gold. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's right. Um, in real estate, is you know, it's like a to me, it's a it's a type of gold. It's brick and mortar. It's it's an asset that also throws off revenue. You know, um, to me, it, it just doesn't get any better. And even if the economy does turn back down, you know, people always need a place to live. You know, and if you have the right properties, you'll still collect your rents. So if you you know, if you have the the really low end properties, you know, you're going to probably struggle no matter what the economy is doing. Mm-hmm. And if you have the high end luxury. You know, unfortunately, you know, like we saw, look what happened to Enron and WorldCom and people like that. I mean, that's, you know, but, but good old fashioned bread and butter, you know, the white picket fence, you know, good solid, 
you know, C plus to, to, to B minus properties, that, that's your, that's your bread and butter. You know, we, the world always needs an, another mechanic, another plumber, another electrician. They're doing quite well, by the way. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, um, so it just to me, it was always that that safe haven that had all the extra benefits. I mean, tax write off. It's just an amazing commodity. Um, if we, if you wouldn't mind, I would not know we could go on and on uh, with this, but um, I know people are going to have to go back to work. It's probably their their half hours coming to an end. But but what? How can people get a hold of you? I know you mentioned you're lending in you know Delaware, Maryland, uh, New Jersey, um, probably Eastern P areas. But but is there a way for people to can they get go to a website, get a free report, maybe even a, maybe you know, just have a conversation like a consultation, you know? Sure. So well, we do have a website. It's realalternativecapital.com. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if people have questions about investing, it doesn't have to be with us, just any questions in general. We have an invest with us page. That's going to talk about a lot of, um, that's going to touch deeper on what we're talking about. And then there is a free report there that talks uh, more specifically about private lending, um, and you know, what are, what are the things to look at? And then, you know, if, if they want to reach out to us, we do have some more educational content, um, that I can provide them, uh, more specifically, kind of like an executive summary, a pitch deck of, of sorts where they can understand what, uh, what private lending is about and, mm -hmm. and, and how their money is going to be deployed. Uh, my phone number is 302-519-5123. That's my cell. I give okay. it to everybody so they can text or call me if they have questions. Okay. And then my email is dave at realalternativecapital.com. And like I said, I welcome questions. Um, this has been life-changing for me and my father. And I know there's a lot of other professionals out there. I, I want to help them as well. So I, it, it may take me, you know, I'm a pretty busy guy, but uh, bear with me. If you send me an email, we'll definitely set something up. I do have a calendar on my page so they could set up a call to speak with me one-on-one -on -one about things. Um, I'd be happy to do that with any, any, any of your listeners. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that, sir. Everybody remember it's, it's real alternative capital.com. Just put up three in, index, you know, first finger, real second finger, alternative, third finger capital, real alternative capital.com. And it emails Dave at real alternative capital.com. And again, the email is area code three zero two. That's great state of Delaware. Number is 5195123. So all we got to remember is 519, nine's the digit there. And 5123, 23's are the two digits there. So you can remember that. Um, in any case, uh, hey, Dave, thanks again for doing this, man. I, that was a lot of, you gave a lot of good, important details that people need to hear. And I, and I think it, when people hear podcasts like this, it gives them confidence. You know, not, not just that there are really real alternatives out there. But there's people just like you and I that, you know, we're in the game, too. And we have been for a while. We've figured out a particular niche. And, you know, you, we prosper, we prosper, we prosper through service. You serve others and you'll prosper as a result. So everybody yep. listen and make sure you take Dave up on his, on his offer there to communicate. And you, 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 get, you get Dave's personal cell phone. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better than that. Um, That's right. Yep. And if you could, again, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. And if you wouldn't mind, leave a review for this one, right? Because I think Dave did an awesome job and gave you some valuable insight to leave a review for, for the, this interview with Dave. And again, go to the uh, Gary Wilson, uh, real estate with Gary .com website, click on members area, go to the right and get in free for 30 days. Grab all you can grab. Think of it. It's Christmas time, right? And connect yourself with one of our uh, certified investor agents. They, they, they know the game. They know what to do and loft in their investors themselves. So take advantage of that. And uh, meantime, you guys take care of yourselves. God bless you and your families. And Dave, thanks one more time. God bless you and your family. And thanks for doing this. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. Okay, everybody, I'll see you next week's podcast. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Massive Passive Cash Flow. Be sure to go to realestatewithgarywilson.com to join our community and start building wealth today.